We're all familiar with the great Jimmy Page riffs that we all try to play, like Whole Lot of Love and Heartbreaker. But today I actually want to talk about seven of the most overlooked and underrated guitar riffs from Jimmy Page. Hi, I'm Carl Baldessar. Let's dig in. So riff number one that I'm going to talk about actually is a two for one. He does the same sort of riff on his first album, and he did it on Houses of the Holy with a little different twist. I'm going to start with the riff from Over the Hills and Far Away. It's the bridge guitar riff, and uh, it goes like this. <laughs> And what's cool about that riff is that he ends it with kind of a major feel. So he's got these little perfect fours. And then. <laughs> and he has that little slide figure. It's just an awesome riff, but he actually did it several years earlier on his very first album on uh, Good Times, Bad Times. And um, it was dressed up a little different. But uh, if you remember after the first chorus, there's a great bass figure that goes, um, and then it goes into this F sharp uh, riff. Yeah, so you get two riffs for one on that. You know, you got the uh, over the hills and far away. And then you've got the good times, bad times riff around the same figure. Yeah, so there you go, riff number one. Okay, so riff number two comes from Song Remains the Same. It's after the third guitar solo, and it's around four minutes and 43 seconds. It's blazing fast and super fun to play once you get it under your fingers. It goes like this. That is an amazing riff. And that would be a fantastic riff for any guitar player. That would be like the number one riff they ever play. But this is buried deep into the song and it's always overlooked. And I think it's one of the greatest ones he's ever had. So for overlooked riff number three, it comes from the second album, What Isn't What Should Never Be. And again, it's towards the back end of the song. It's at three minutes and 32 seconds. And like a lot of his riffs, they are actually set up in kind of a binary structure with a question and then an answer. And this riff has that exact sort of dialogue going on. Here we go. It goes. A great riff. And when I'm saying kind of question and answer, you know, the first uh, phrase of that riff is a question. So, question. And here's the answer. So riffs, like a lot of uh, music composition, is about a dialogue. And so to think about it in terms of questions and answers is a really good way to kind of write. And Jimmy Page was excellent at creating dialogues with his riffs and his music. Let's move on to riff number four. Now this is another deep cut. This is from Physical Graffiti, the song Down by the Seaside. Now this riff is uh, behind a little country guitar solo that he does. And I'm sure, I don't even know if anybody's ever covered this riff ever, but it's, it's a simple little thing, but it's a really cool figure. And it goes like this. And it's a heck of a lot of fun to play. And he's got that uh, really cool sort of pedal steel imitating guitar solo. Going, going over top of that. And uh, it's just an awesome little break in that song. Again, kind of set up like a question and answer. Question. Answer. So the Down by the Seaside riff is really cool and often overlooked. My fifth overlooked riff is actually in one of the most important rock songs that Jimmy Page ever wrote with the greatest riff of all time, the Heartbreaker uh, song, which has the great intro riff. We all know that riff, but do you remember this little riff that he does as his own backing track for the guitar solo? 
it goes like this. It's the, it's the second guitar solo that he does this riff on. It's a cool riff around the, uh, the A figure, and it actually sort of presages what was to come in the song Rock and Roll, because the main riff was really built around that figure, which went like this. Very similar figuration, if you go. So you can see, basically, you know, he's got this great riff as a rhythm track underneath his epic solo, no, solo number two in Heartbreaker. But again, those sort of shapes and forms, he, you know, just does a little bit of an embellishment, sli slightly different decoration to it, and you get out of that riff. So pretty cool to kind of go back and put those things together. Riff number six. Now this one is also kind of buried deep in a great song from the first album called How Many More Times. And it occurs around six minutes into the song. And um, it's um, a really cool riff. I call it the Hunter riff because it's when Robert Plant's starting to singing about I am the Hunter. And uh, it's an excellent riff because it uses a lot of open strings and it sort of feels like it might be easy, but to actually execute is kind of tricky, but it is an awesome epic riff. It goes like this. You know, it has that great uh, sharp nine stinger chord at the end because Page was sort of influenced by Jimi Hendrix chord because that was that chord kind of swept the rock world when Hendrix first did it. And it's really kind of the stinger of this riff. So there's the Hunter riff from How Many More Times. So finally, riff number seven of the overlooked riffs from Jimmy Page. This one I'm going really deep track. I'm going to go to the live version of Dazed and Confused from the Madison Square Garden 1973 show. This is like 23 minutes <laughs> into the song. It's like a 28 minute version of Dazed and Confused. And 23 minutes in after the bow solo and they're doing all this sort of improvisational call and response, he lays out this riff, and, and I will say one thing about the live Dazed and Confused, it seemed to be sort of the test kitchen for Led Zeppelin to come up with a whole bunch of other riffs that became songs. So they came up with Achilles' Last Stand, they came up with Walter's Walk. I mean, there was probably a half a dozen things they tried out live just by improvising and jamming. This one, this riff, never really, made, I haven't heard it in any of Led Zeppelin's music, but it is an awesome, epic riff, and it goes like this. And then he goes into this really cool hybrid picking figure, which goes like this. And that crazy wacky climb out. So there you go, that's riff number seven, a deep cut from the live Dazed and Confused. I hope you enjoyed this journey through the seven overlooked riffs. And if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'd love you to comment. And in your comments, tell me, are there other riffs that you'd like me to look at that might've been overlooked? Thank you very much. I'm Carl Baldessar.